Hey guys, this is Ed from Mission Impossible. Welcome back to my Let's Make Adventure series where we're making a roguelike on the Atari 8-bit line of computers using assembly language. This is episode 19 and we're working on map generation. And uh, last episode, we went through and created some rooms, etc. But I had recorded some footage that didn't make it into the video. So first off, we're gonna go through that. It's gonna have some memory location changes as well as introducing our random function. Also, there were some changes that I wanted to make to the code that people had called out. Uh, I had some unnecessary code in there for dealing with some of the random numbers. So we're gonna simplify that as well. This week, we're also gonna be adding doors to make it so that next time we can be able to add some more rooms to be able to go between them. Let's get into it. So first thing, let's uh, make sure everything is assembling correctly and playing okay. Um, so we can move around on the map. Everything is all good to go. Uh, I just wanted to do a level set before we start. Um, so what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna remove this map and we're gonna be putting in our own new procedurally generated map. Um, so first things we wanna do though, is we're gonna need a lot of space for this map. The map that we're gonna wanna make is gonna be like 129 by 129. And that's gonna need a lot more memory. And in fact, it's gonna need about 16K. I say about because it's actually gonna need a little bit more than that, um, but we need to make sure to reserve a certain amount of space for that. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to do some uh, moving of things around. One of my main goals here is to be able to put this on a cartridge and you know, either burn an EEPROM with it or even maybe publish it. Uh, that would be kind of the end goal for me. Um, so we want to make sure that this will fit on a cartridge and we need to make sure that we uh, keep track of what's ROM and what's RAM. Um, so first off, what we're gonna have here is that we have the RAM locations right here from 2000 to 7 FFF, okay? And then we have, if we're gonna use a 16K cartridge, we're gonna have ROM locations from 8,000 to BFFF, okay? And that's gonna be 16K, two 8K banks. Uh, if we were gonna be using a left and right cartridge on an Atari 800, those would be separate 8K banks, but since you know most of the machines only had a left cartridge, it's gonna be this 16K. Yes, you can go bigger. Um, you can go really big if you want. The deal is, is that in order to do that, you have to use what's called bank switching. I don't wanna to have to do that just because it's gonna get really messy when it comes to where the code is assembled and all that. So I'm gonna try to reserve it so that we can fit it all in 16K and also the RAM usage in the 24K. Um, I think we can do it, uh, but <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see when the time comes if we have to make some changes. Um, first of all, the biggest chunk that we're gonna be using is the map. As I mentioned, we're gonna use 16K, we're gonna use a little bit more than that, so I'm actually gonna allocate uh, more than 16K. It's basically gonna be um, uh, 20K. Uh, so, and that's okay, we can actually fit it all right. So we're gonna say, we're gonna put the map at 2000, okay? And as I said, put uh, 16K plus. And then we're gonna put the screen at 7,000, okay? And the screen buffer is only 480 bytes. Uh, we, you know, from what we were doing, it was only 40 bytes across, and then we have 12 lines of that, so that's 480. Then we have our status line, which is offset by that 480 bytes. This is only 40, 40 bytes. And then we're gonna have some free space right here. And then we're gonna also need to set aside some space for the player missile graphics, okay? So that's PMG. We're gonna go ahead and put that there. Um, we also have some free space here. So for RAM usage, this is all we're using for RAM. Obviously this map is huge, but we only have to keep one map in memory at any given time. So I think this will work. Uh, so we don't need these anymore. These can go away. Uh, as well as screen and status line. Now we'll talk about the ROM, okay? ROMs 
We're gonna start off actually with the dungeon and we're gonna instead of put it at 5,000, we're gonna put that at 8,000, okay? And this is gonna be 1K. And I'm gonna go ahead and reserve the B part of the dungeons. We talked about this before of having uh, animation by switching between character sets. And so we're gonna just do 8,800 for the uh, B character set. And then we'll just keep going up with the outdoor. So this is gonna be at 88. And so we'll just do 1K. We'll do the outdoor B, just so we have some animation. Um, this one we might be able to get away with not having animation on the outdoor, just well. Actually, if we wanna have moving water, we're probably gonna to wanna to have that. So um, we'll go ahead and reserve it regardless. Um, so this is gonna be 8C. And then now what we're gonna do is, so this is gonna be seven or 8,000 to uh, eight, 8, to 8 FFF. Now we're, let's allocate for the next section. So this is gonna be 9,000 through 9 FFF. So we're gonna nine, let's say 1K. Okay, that's gonna be at 9,400. All right. And so we're gonna have free space here. And I'm gonna stick our code in this last section here, this last 4K into B, 000. Okay, I'm gonna say uh, code uh, B to uh, B F F F. Let's say code, okay? So this is gonna be where our code lives. Let's also update our includes to reflect these new locations. Um, we don't need map anymore, okay? These are gonna be uh, our ROM. So I'm just gonna make a note there. This is gonna be our, uh, so there's actually all of this is gonna be in ROM actually, to be honest. Um, so we don't need that, but we do want to put these in a different order because these are going to be coming in before our code. Everything below here is all code. Um, the PMG data, eh, I can probably just live there, but we're just going to use these right here. So let's, let's make sure that this, um, will assemble, make sure we didn't break anything. Okay. Um, this might look like we broke something, but we actually didn't. This is the way the map looks when it's all full of zeros. Because if you remember, the zeroth character is a blank and the first character is this uh, wall, this vertical wall. So our map is empty. So it's actually doing the right thing. So that is the organization that I wanted to do for the code. And now let's get into what we're gonna need to really focus on this uh, episode, and that is random numbers. Uh, we need to create a random number generator. One way to get a random number on the Atari 8-bit is to use the Pokey chip. There's actually a random uh, location where you just read it and you get another random number. There's an issue with that, and that is that we wanna be able to seed the random number generator. And the reason why we want to be able to do that is because we need reproducible numbers. We need to, to have numbers that are going to repeat uh, based on the seed we give it so that we can say, okay, this map is always going to look like this because with this seed, every random number that's generated after that will be deterministic. And that's important. We, we definitely want that. We don't want just, just random numbers. If we want just random numbers, we can use the pokey chip for that. Um, and so let's uh, let's work on getting a random number generator that can actually use the seed. The way we do that is we use what's called the linear feedback shift register. It's a LFSR. Um, and it's, it's a very common way of generating random numbers. It basically shifts the number and does an XOR on it 
and then returns that number. And then it, it does that. And it basically every time you do that, you get a new number. It's pseudo random. And that's actually all random numbers on a computer are pseudo random numbers anyway. Um, so, well, let's create this, this function. We're gonna call it uh, random eight. Now, the reason I'm calling that is because in case we want to start using 16-bit random numbers, we can totally modify this to use that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to do this. So first of all, we're going to load in the seed, okay, this random number. We need to actually set that up up here. Let's go ahead and put it here. We're going to call it rand, and we're going to call it, we're going to put it in A7 because status pointer uses two uh, bytes there. So we're going to put it in A7. And so we're going to load in, load in seed or last uh, number generated. Because every time we generate that number, we're going to actually overwrite that, that RAND value. We could, if we wanted to keep it as a separate value, to keep it as a seed. But for right now, we'll just use this. So the first thing to do with our LFSR is we're going to do a left sh shift. <laughs> The first thing we're going to do is we're going to shift right. So we're going to do an LSR and we're going to say shift one uh, place to the right. And then we're going to do a BCC. We're going to see if the carry bit has a zero in it. That's what this B, uh, BCC is checking. Um, so we say uh, the carry flag contains the last bit prior to shifting. If zero, skip the XOR. We don't want to do an XOR on it if it's zero. Um, and then we do an XOR. Why they didn't use XOR instead of just EOR for exclusive OR, don't know. But we're gonna XOR it with the value of B4. Why before? Well, I'm gonna put some comments on there on why, but the idea is that empirically, I think they, when they were designing these kind of LFSR things, so basically going through and trying to make it so that you have a value in here that will produce the best results. We wanted to make sure that we don't have uh, too many repeats and, and make it so that we can get through all of the values. And B4 happens to be a good value for that. So again, I'll put some comments in here for more reading if you'd like to get into that. Uh, so I'm going to say XOR with feedback value that produces a good sequence. Okay. And we need to now put our no EUR on here. We don't need a comment there. We're done. So we're going to say store the random number. RTS and P. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and comment. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these comments in here. Feel free to look up some of these links. Uh, I didn't come up with this, absolutely not. And uh, to be honest, it's not something I've delved heavily into. A little bit of hand wavy here, but this will generate a random number for us. Um, so that's all we need to do to get a random number. And uh, so when this is called, it's gonna load in what it was before, do the exclusive or or not. And then it's going to just store it in the random number. Um, and that's it, okay? A couple of you guys uh, commented on the choose room num and choose room pause functions that we created last time. And, uh, you know, after thinking about it for a minute, I was a little bit embarrassed in the fact that I didn't see a much, much better way of doing this. I, to be honest, I got caught up with the way that the random numbers would be laid out and I uh, was making it more difficult than I needed it to be. So all we really need to do here is do a random eight to get a random number. And it's actually, uh, the random number is already in the accumulator, so we really don't have to load rand. Um, but what we're gonna need to do is and it with 15 in order to say we want the last four bits. And then we're gonna say store in room num. And then we're gonna do the same thing for room position and say and 63, store in room pause. 
go ahead and comment these out. And let's try it out. Okay, it's exactly the same way as it was, a whole lot less code, and it's a lot easier to understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up. We don't need them anymore. Uh, I'm gonna probably fill this out and say, let's say, um, get room number between zero and 15. Get room position between zero and 63. And then we can actually just remove these. Boom. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure everything is good. Yep, and we're good to go. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add some doors. Um, in order to be able to walk the map, we need to be able to get to another room. So the first thing we need to do, we need to set up a lookup table for the doors to know what is valid for each room position. Okay, so let's create a new file and let's call it room pause doors. <laughs> it's kind of awkward, but basically it's, these are gonna be only for the room positions. Um, we're also going to know, have to know uh, when we're dealing with the different types of rooms, which ones are valid. So we'll be worrying about that next, but let's first worry about the positions. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste these. Um, it's a lot of, lot of data here, but I'll walk through it with you. Uh, so we got room pause doors. And so here's the idea. If you, uh, first of all, we need to know which position in here means north, south, east, or west. And I have that here. I have this, we can go ahead and put in labels here. Um, go ahead and put it, eh, doesn't really matter. But we have north, south, east, and west. Or west and east, I should say. And so if the first bit in this, we're using only four bits of this. Um, if the first bit is active, that means that the north door is available. Uh, if the south, you know, the south bit, west bit, you know, the same thing goes for each one of these. So if you have a, a, a room somewhere in the map that's not on the borders, it's gonna have all four of these bits on. If you have a one in like say the upper left hand corner, it's not gonna have north and it's not gonna have west. It's only gonna have south and east. So that's gonna be zero one zero one. And so if we look at this right here, it's exactly what we have. This is the northwest and this is the all the top uh, rows. Uh, across the top, so north is unavailable for all these. Then we have the northeast corner. Then we have the uh, uh, west side, the east side, and then we have the south side, okay? So this is gonna take 64 bytes to store. Now we could get creative and if we really needed to, to reduce this, we could actually either double up on these or have you know one byte being served for both of these but the problem with that is then it's going to need a separate instruction to be able to decode it not as ideal right now i think we're okay with just using the 64 bytes but we do need to put this in our main file uh, so that we can uh, load that in so we're gonna we need to allocate some space for it i'm gonna go ahead and put it here room pause doors and so this uh, room positions takes 128 bytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into my calculator and see what we actually need here. Um, so AE10 and then add 128 bytes to it. No, oh, it's 128 hex, we don't want that. Uh, let's see. So AE, first of all, so 128 decimal is 80 hexadecimal. I'm using a, a you know, calculator on my phone to make it easy. Um, 
and tried using them online and, and apps and stuff and I just haven't been happy with them. Um, so we said AE10 plus 80 uh, equals AE90. And I probably could have done that math. <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably could have done that. Regardless. <laughs> um, I keep track of this so that the next time I go through here, it makes it a lot easier to do that calculation. Okay, so let's load those in. Um, so that's room positions and room door or room pause doors. Okay, and let's uh, go ahead and make sure that it, um, make sure there's nothing broken. No, nothing broken. Uh, is able to load in the positions for the doors. So now what we need to do is go through and say, where can we put doors on the map for our one room, okay? So we go in here, we are going to make a new function here. So I'm gonna say proc get um, doors. So we're gonna get the initial doors for where the position is. Then we're gonna figure out which are the valid doors based on the type of room it is. So we're gonna say get doors uh, for now. And we're gonna just say, we know the position of the, the room position, right? So now we just need to go through our um, doors here and find the right one, okay? Uh, so we need just to advance the pointer. Uh, now it's 64 bytes, which actually is pretty easy. We can say, um, we know the room position. So we're gonna say LDY room pause, because we're gonna just load in the room pause to Y. Uh, we know our room position. So now we need to go through our, uh, the room pause doors and find the correct thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load in uh, room pause doors, comma Y. Now the problem with this is this is the actual uh, location of it. Will that work? No. We need to use a pointer to this. So what we're gonna do is we'll create a pointer. Uh, so we'll do a MWA and we're gonna say room pause doors, just like we've done with everything else. And we're gonna copy that into temp adder one. We're just gonna use that as our address again. And now we can say temp adder one. Depending on the room position, we have now loaded in whichever number we have here. So now what we can do is we can set up a variable to say what our doors are for our particular room, okay? We're gonna need to keep track of the doors that are available, okay? Uh, so since we're gonna have to come back through this, so we're actually gonna need to create some new space in RAM that tells us where, uh, what the doors currently are. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here and we're gonna need to see, have 64 bytes right here and we're gonna say room doors, I guess. Well, we have, room pause doors and we're going to say room doors okay um and we're going to say uh we need to add 225 bytes here so let's uh, figure out what that is 225 and hex is e1 to hex so um that one is 7208 plus e1 uh, 72 E9, again, that could have been something I probably could have done in my head, but it's okay. Um, uh, room doors, I don't know what else to say. And this is gonna also be 64 bytes, okay? And so we now have a uh, space allocated in here. So let's write to that spot. Uh, so we're gonna say store um, into room door. So we need another temp adder 
for this. So let's go with um, MWA room doors into temp outer two. And then we need to advance. Actually, we don't need to advance. We just need to say store into temp outer two. So we're just copying this data from RAM or from ROM to RAM. And we're gonna be changing it uh, depending on what we get from the uh, room uh, type, okay? So we said, we're gonna load this in, uh, the, the room position. One nice thing is we're dealing with numbers that are less than 255, so we can just use this nice Y offset. Um, and so we've got on our, our initial doors, okay? Our room doors is now, you know, should now have something populated depending on the door we have. It's not gonna be fully populated, it's just gonna be whatever door we have looked up. Um, or whatever, whatever room we've looked up, okay? So I'll just put a comment here, get door, possible doors for uh, the room, the room. Um, yeah, that's fine, because we're gonna be doing individual rooms. Now let's see, get doors uh, for the room type, okay, um, position. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing and then we're gonna and them together so that we make sure that we have, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna have valid doors for uh, our room. So we can do this. So we can say we have room pause doors, okay? Now, if our rooms here are currently set up to be basically just boring square rooms, well, we know that there's doors that are gonna be able to go on all four sides, north, south, east, west. So this is gonna be a really easy table to create. I am gonna create it in another file. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this as room. Uh, we haven't really been using the word type until this episode, but that's okay. We're just gonna call it room type uh, doors. And we're gonna do org room type doors. And with our current types of rooms, they're all the same. So really, it's just gonna be this. It's just gonna be one, 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 okay? Uh, and then we just need 15 of them, or 16 of them, I should say. Um, so really, it's just gonna be, let's do, well, um, we can do it in one line. Let's just do it in two, I guess. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. It's, you know, it might not need to be in its own file, but it just makes it a little easier to, to look stuff up here. Um, so let's also add some memory for that. We only have 16 bytes that we need for this. So I'm gonna say room, pause doors. So we have type doors. We might change the name later on, but that works for now. Um, and then we have AE, uh, let's go, it goes 10 added. So AE A0, and that's gonna be 16 bytes. Um, and that's not correct because we need to add 64 bytes to that. Let me, uh, let me do my calculator. <laughs> uh, 64. So we gotta add 40 to that. So that's gonna be, A would be 10, B 20, C 30, D zero. <laughs> okay, uh, probably a good, good practice to get into. So we just added 64 bytes to that and we have that allocated and we need to load it in. So let's do that. ICL room type doors, okay. And let's make sure we don't have any problems. Error in missing end P. Uh, we, uh, we forgot to end the P. Okay, I usually try to do this just to make sure we don't get into a weird situation. Um, let's just make sure it compiles. Okay, we're good. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load in 
the room type um, to the to Y. And we've said uh, the room type, we've already, uh, we've already figured out what the room type is. So that's fine. And uh, then we're gonna say MWA room type into temp adder one. We're gonna reuse temp adder one. Uh, so I'm gonna put some comments in here. Setup Y for getting room type. Uh, set up pointer for indirect addressing. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna load in temp adder one comma Y to say uh, load room type into accumulator. And we're gonna say store it into a temp variable. Okay, so we need to, uh, we're gonna be doing an and on this, so we need to actually set this so that it's gonna be in some temp variable instead of trying to use the indirect addressing, it won't work with and. Um, so we're gonna say store room type into temp variable. Okay, next we're gonna do is we're gonna say load in the room position into the Y uh, register. Set up Y for getting room position. And then we're gonna say LDA temp adder one. Um, I'm a Y. Uh, oh, actually, no, sorry, temp adder two, that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna load back in our uh, room doors uh, stuff because we haven't changed what temp, temp adder two is. So uh, load in room door for this um, index, okay? And then we're gonna say, we're gonna end it with what's in temp, okay? Um, with uh, type and then uh, let's go ahead and put in position set of index okay we're going to end it and then we're going to store it back into temp adder 2 oh my store back into uh, room doors okay so what this is going to do is it's going to first get the possible doors for that particular room position. Then for the room type, it's going to go through and and it with that room position. So when we have rooms that are going to be uh, different than just a blank square room, um, when we, you know, if we want to have stuff like an L or, or things where the rooms are not going to have all four doors available, uh, we want to be able to limit those. So uh, this will go ahead and do that for us so that when we're uh, creating this, when we do a walk, we want to make sure that you're not going to be able to walk into, you know, open area or even say, I have this door sticking out out in the middle of uh, nowhere. So <laughs> I'm trying to prevent that. Uh, so we have now gone through and we've figured out what doors are possible, uh, at least for right now. We will have some stuff in the future where we're gonna probably have to limit this, but for right now, this is gonna do. Uh, before we move on, uh, I noticed that we have a bug right here. We need this to be room type doors and not room type. Um, that was not good. Okay, so uh, now that we have our rooms, we need to place them. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new function called place doors, okay? So first off, we're gonna load in the uh, room position, okay? So we're doing load in to the Y register, the, the room position in the Y register, use the room doors, uh, move the room doors into the temp adder so we can use the indirect addressing, um, load it in, and then we're gonna store it into a variable just called temp because we're gonna need to load this many, many times. Uh, so the idea here is that we're gonna be checking uh, to see if uh, with the particular doors that we have, 
uh, is north available, south, west, or east. And we're gonna check for each one, and if they are, we're gonna go ahead and place them. So first off, we're gonna do a check for north. And so we're gonna load in temp, and then we're gonna end it with door north to say, hey, is north in, in the list effectively? Uh, and if not, it's just gonna skip down to the next check. And if so, it's gonna place uh, the north door. So I've got um, the rest of these already typed out here. So we have check south, west, and east. These are all uh, pretty self-explanatory here. Uh, we're just checking to see if they're there and then it's gonna call the particular function, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the implementation here and so we're going to do a place north door and so with each of these oh, I don't like that with each of these we're going to uh, go to the uh, top left of the room and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some math on it to place it where we need to for the door so for the north door we need to go up one line and then go over half uh, a room width so here's what the subtract the subtraction goes up a line and then we add back in for uh, the room width um, now we're going to load in the map door so if we look in uh, the labels here we actually have this set up already but this is kind of not correct because map door if we look at our file here Map door is right here, up in the up the top line, and map doorway should be down here. For now, we're just gonna use the doorway because we want it to be walkable. Uh, we don't wanna have to implement the opening doors and stuff like that right now. We'll deal with that later, and then we'll make that easy change. For now, we're just gonna call it map door and be done, okay? Um, so let's get back to what we were doing. Uh, so we load in the map door, and then we store it at the map pointer. And then we're gonna do the same thing for south. So south is gonna be a little different in that we need to go to the bottom of the room and then go halfway over for the place in the door. So, uh, you know, if you remember, we had to do looping in order to get through there because it's, it's gonna be a big number here. We can't just say add. Uh, you know, room height times room uh, width, like we were able to do with the temp room and stuff like that. So we have to get back into this looping. Um, we can't use our advanced pointer because this is gonna assign it at the beginning. Uh, so uh, we just do it the old fashioned way here and just go through it. So this should look very similar here, except that we are looping. And I have ones for both west and east. Let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, for this one, for west, we are going to the top left, and then we're gonna be going down uh, so that it's going to be um, in the left-hand side wall. And then for the east, we're gonna go over and then go halfway down, same thing. Um, only thing we have to do now is we have to call the procedure place doors, okay? And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we don't have a wall, or we don't have a we don't have a door on this side. That's fine. We do on here. Okay, on the north, we have one on the east, and we have one on the south. That tells me that uh, we're on the left-hand side of the map because we don't have a door right here, uh, and that's totally fine. So next time we will go through and we will add another room um, and be able to walk between them. So that's all we have for today. So until next time, see you in the next adventure. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. I post new videos all the time and I wouldn't want you to miss any. If you'd like to see more of this series, be sure to click up here. And if you'd like to see something else, be sure to click up here.